This is something a little bit exciting. Renault has revived the dormant Alpine brand, reimagining the classic Alpine A110 of 1962 as a modern alternative to the Porsche Cayman. It's a fascinating car to look at, with plenty of design details that throw back to the original, including love em or hate em spotlights on the front bumper. The retro bodywork cloaks a lightweight aluminium chassis with F1-style double wishbone suspension at the front and rear. Power comes from a turbocharged 1.8-litre engine that sends 185 kilowatts and 320 newton meters to the rear wheels through a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. That engine is mounted in the middle of the car, lending an outstanding balance on the road and track. This certainly is a joyous little car to drive. Here on the Grand Sambuk circuit, it just feels so alive, it's nimble. You can really feel the effort that Renault has gone to to minimize the weight in this car. Yeah, you've got this soft suspension that really allows you to work with the weight transfer. You can feel the car pitch and roll, and then you can work with that, really feel what the car is doing, and bend it to your will. It's a really neutral, agile, playful little car, this. Give it a bit of a slide through the corners and whatnot. It's actually, it's a lot of fun to drive. Brakes are brilliant. Lots of feel, a lot of power. They're not huge discs, but they don't need to be. It's such a light little car. Got the paddles fixed to the steering column, which is good. You always know where they're gonna be. The Alpine has three main driving modes. It's got normal, which is sort of the comfort mode, sport and track. We've got the car set up in track, which loosens off the ESP somewhat making it a little bit easier to have a bit of a slide and a giggle. You can also completely deactivate ESP, which is definitely something best left for the track, in order to have a bit more fun with the car and do some bigger slides. And it doesn't have any problem really doing that. Alpine says this is not a dedicated track car. And yeah, it doesn't have the super stiff suspension and the sticky tires and all that sort of stuff that you might find in something that is intended to be a real weekend warrior but it does perform really well on track. It's, it's all about that light, that light weight, that real balance that you get in the car and just the connection it offers to you as the driver. Come in on the brakes and there we go, get a little bit loose and then. <laughs> it's slippery, but the car dances. The point of balance is right where you are. You can feel the car rotating around you. Center of gravity is just spot on. This is a super impressive little car. This is a car that's really taken me by surprise. It probably is my biggest surprise of 2017. I'm not really sure what I was expecting because this was an all new car. We hadn't seen a car from Alpine before, not for more than 20 years. And as far as first cracks go, this is brilliant. There's been some criticism from enthusiasts for Alpine refusing to offer a manual transmission in this car. And I have to say over the driving that we've done today, I've not once wished that it had a manual transmission. The seven speed dual clutch automatic is brilliant. It's, it's a real evolution on what we've seen from Renault in the past. It's definitely a step up from what you'd find in the Clio RS and it points to a really good sign for the Megane RS that will offer a similar transmission being quite good as well. Renault has not gone for a variable suspension system in the car. Instead, it has fixed rate shock absorbers mated to conventional steel springs. And the results are brilliant. They basically just found the perfect setting and then apply that to the car. It doesn't try and get too stiff or soft or floaty. Depending on different settings, it just works and it works brilliantly. The interior for the Alpine is reasonably impressive. The touch points are quite good. The steering wheel is right size, it's quite small and meaty in your hand. I don't mind the seats at all. I'm a, I'm a tall guy and a big guy and I'm quite comfortable in the car. I feel really well supported by the seats and yeah, there's a decent amount of room in here as well. And uh, some nice quilted leather on the seats and door trims, a little bit of uh, Alcantara style material, dynamic as suede throughout the car as well. That um, yeah, makes it, makes it feel a little bit sporty and a little bit special. It's not a car with a lot of technology on board for the driver. You don't get a reversing camera, you do get parking sensors. Things like active cruise control are just not gonna happen. Another controversial element is that Alpine elected not to fit side airbags to the car, which is a big call, particularly in this safety conscious age that we're in at the moment. And it also restricts the number of cars that they can bring into Australia, a maximum of 100 per year, based on a gentleman's agreement within the FCAI, basically the peak body of automobiles in Australia. Overall, I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised by the Alpine. This is a car that we, we didn't know what it was going to be like at all. I'm thrilled with what they've achieved. This is a car that feels uniquely French. It has soft, supple suspension. It has a real driver-focused 
dynamics and it's it is a lot of fun to drive it's quite a cool car and it's unlike anything else i mean we've we've talked about it as being a potential rival to the to the cayman to the audi tt and things like that it is in a way but it's also its own car and that's something that should be celebrated this really is something quite different and it is something quite special well done alpine welcome back and we can't wait to see what you've got coming up next it really is a special car to drive feeling less like a rich man's Renault and more like a poor man's McLaren. Renault Australia has not locked in full pricing and specifications for local examples, which are expected to follow this European Premier Edition with lashings of carbon fibre, faux suede and race style seats. Don't expect much change from 100 grand when the Alpine arrives locally in June 2018.